Hmm, so I came across this code the other day and without actually taking a look at the solution, if you are a JavaScript developer, I want you to try to think about how this can be a legit valid code. And then maybe we'll discuss a little bit about what I actually saw. Honestly, as a JavaScript developer myself, I, in, in the first thought, I was unable to actually think how this will work. And for those guys who haven't really guessed by now or have seen by now, this is not a string. It's you're literally just writing, uh, you know, some domain name and a domain URL with a www. And then, yeah, that's that's that seems like magical. It's uncomfortably magical, right? And it works with async await as well. So it's a promise something is happening i don't know what what or why and there is some chinese things going on here in this repo so uh yeah i mean how does this work let's see Alrighty, so this is the solution for this and this involves es6 proxies if you don't know what es6 proxy is simply putting es6 proxy is a middleman between your object and whenever you try to access your object, right? In terms of getting a property or setting a property and it'll become clear in, in just a minute. So what I wanna do is I want to debug this code somehow intuitively, although I can just go ahead and, you know, just tell you how this works and what, what I know about this code, but that won't be so much fun, right? So let's do an interactive debugging session of this code in this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. First of all, let's just try this out. Let's just confirm this works. So I have got www as this new proxy mess. Somehow this works some magic way. And now if I try to do an await of www.codedam.com, for example, uh, well, it refuses to connect because of the co content security policy. So maybe let's see if we have dot example.com. I don't know. Yeah, that's that too. Let's try github.com because you know, it's, it's the same origin. Okay, I think GitHub uh, has a very strict content security policy here. So maybe, just maybe if we can try to open example.com domain itself and then copy it there and then try to make sense of this weirdness. Await www.example.com. Right, so now you can see, well, you know, you get the idea. I'm, I'm not going to just go ahead and fix every single error here, but this is the code. Now, what is happening in this code? First of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put a bunch of debuggers at, a diff at different places, right? So debugger here, debugger here, debugger here, and debugger finally here as well, right? And uh, let's just give it a debugger here as well. And before we get into proxy, actually, let me just go ahead and quickly give you a, oops, let me just go ahead and quickly give you a brief syntax overview of how a proxy works. So let's say I have an object one as X one, right? And I have an object two, which is a new proxy, proxy over X, you know, over this ob obj one, right? So the first argument which you pass is a target or something which you want to target which you want to set this proxy on. And the second argument which you pass is a handler, right? So what, what should happen when you get it or set it or you know do any sort of stuff. So if I have a function like get target and prop, and if I just do, let's say console.log, yo, and then target and prop, and just return, you know, target of prop, what you're gonna see is that now if I try to do object two dot X, you see that we actually get this yo console log as well. And then we get the original object, which was the target and the prop as well, which was being accessed. So in this case, we were accessing X, right? If I do something like object two dot Y, or no, dot Y, you can see I get yo, the target object and the actual object. So you see, you have actually intercepted the call between object 2.x. So you have certain custom code running before you actually return the property. And you can do all sorts of fun here as well. But coming back to our original uh, code snippet, how the hell does this thing 
allows you to do a non-string async await network call. Well, let's see how this is happening. So I'm going to do an await of www.example.com and we're going to be seeing in the debugger what's happening. All right, it's debug time. So if I go ahead and open this debugger, oops, not this one, this one right here, you can see we get our first debugger right here, right? So and if, I, if I go ahead now, and let me just give this a little bit of more space. If I go ahead now and see target, you can see we have our URL object. You can see this URL is our object, right? So this is what we passed. So target is obviously our new URL object, which is constructed and prop is example. Interesting. So if you take a look in the console, you will see that www in fact is an object. And what you're trying to do here, if you think about this, is you're trying to access example as the property of that object, right? So we run this get, we run this get uh, handler inside of your proxy. So what's happening here is that, okay, you're trying to get www from this target. And obviously there's no www property which exists, right? So it doesn't make sense. So what we do is we actually try to get the property out of this using reflect.get. So what reflect.get does is that it's technically just, you know, trying to get the, you know, target of prop, which is, which is, you know, square bracket. So it's reflect.get is technically just doing target of prop, this thing, right? So obviously we do not have a, a, you know, example property on this target object, which is our URL. So our O is undefined. So that is type of O is not a function. Therefore, we will not run this. So we go to the next statement. If type of prof is not a string, well, it is a string, so we won't even run this. If prop is equal to then, prop is not then, it's example, then also we will not run this. So if nothing is like that, we convert, we create this new URL from target. So you can see target technically was already a URL, but we initialize it again. And we set the host name, that is, the host name of the, you know, the host name is basically if you have www.example.com, then your host name is www.example.com, right? So you can see right now the host name is www only. And why is that? Because see that you initialize it like this with HTTPS and this is the part. So it's it's an incomplete URL technically, right? It's it's an incomplete URL in, in some ways. Uh, and then you just append the whatever it is passed example, but you automatically, you know, just manually sneak, sneak in a dot here. So it becomes www.example this time. And then you finally return this target, uh, you know, this object as the return value, right? So this is where magic happens. And this is why you are able to chain these things, right? So after example, the reason you are able to call .com is because you have actually returned another proxy, right? So you're back to square one, you're back to what um, this www was defined like, right? So that's a pretty cool hack, which which is going on here. And then you also put the same getter methods, which is, you know, the function which you have defined here. This is important because the next time this function runs, you want to run the same thing again, you want to run this whole same thing again, right? So that's important. All right, so now you have got evaluated this www.example, right? So you have a host name with you, you have partial host name, I won't really say complete host name, and you are ready to go. Now your JavaScript says that, okay, boss, I have got a new proxy with me. Now I want to go ahead and call a .com on that object, right? So I think it's simple now. If you go ahead and play this again, you'll see your new target has a host name of www.example. Then you go ahead and you try to get another property, which is, you know, .com, which obviously does not exist on the URL. So we skip this. It's not a, you know, it's not a function. It's not a string. So we also skip this. I mean, it, it is a string. So we skip this. Prop is also not then. So we skip this as well. We finally arrive here. We reconstruct the same thing. Basically what happened with the example is happening again. And we just return the same thing again. Now, the magic starts now in some ways or another. Why? Because now at this time, you'll see you have your full domain with you, 
but in terms of prop you have a dot then and how does this work how how where, where have i written then well it turns out that when you're using await javascript would obviously internally call dot then method on on that particular promise so that it resolves uh you know it, it tries to resolve it to a particular value right so you know how we do a promise like fetch request and then we do a dot then like this similarly even when you're using await javascript will invoke dot then that's the reason if you do something like await fetch you know dot then then obviously this then would run then obviously this then would run right so yeah okay so now once we have been calling then on the property you will try to see that now again o is undefined because then does not exist on url but it's, it's a promise property but we will hit this point right here if prop is equal to then right is our next prop then yes sir it is so in this case what we do is that we fetch the target you know we already have a nice url to us then we bind it to the promise then which i am not very sure why is needed but it might be we could try it without the binding as well let's see and yeah that's it so we just return that and the next time javascript resolves it it's actually resolving a fetch request right so that's pretty smart but obviously this this is not you know this is not bulletproof in the sense um first of all let's try to do this without uh let's make it http all right let's try it on google so now if i do a dot then here instead of you know just console.log whatever response we are getting hit enter oops let's refresh let's try this one more time and now if i do await www.google.com hit enter you could see we get pretty much the same thing so that's cool that is cool and yeah that's how this weird snippet works but of course it will fail with something like await then.google.com you know www.then.google.com because you know it'll just stuck here get stuck here right so that is a problem but yeah i mean this is a pretty cool snippet just just for casual looking but never really use this in production <laughs> i mean we obviously have got better ways we have got strengths thankfully but yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you learned something new about proxies and some stuff in this video if you did make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and share it with other people that is all for this video i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon